Welcome back everyone to the Overclocking World Championship Las Vegas 2017. We are just at the dawn of the final here. We will know who from Stepanzi or Lucky will get the first awarded ticket for the 2017 season Overclocking World Championship World Final that's gonna happen by the end of the year. Uh, I'm Truthman from Overclocking TV and for this final match I will be joined by Bill Zoid from UK and he will be commenting with us this match. Uh, the Overclockers are still setting up the system. They are still uh, trying out to make sure that everything is working so that, uh, the way it works uh, for, for these few matches. They have 30 minutes to do the best score they can in one of the benchmarks that will work, that will uh, get uh, randomly selected. Every time there is a benchmark that is being selected, each overclocker have one veto. They only have one for the complete match, so they can use their veto to not do a certain benchmark. So for example, one of the benchmark is like Super Pi 16M, and one of the overclocker know that his opponent is better than him. That's the best way to use your veto. If none of the overclocker use their veto, well, that's the benchmark they're gonna use. If a bench, uh, an overclocker use his veto, that's gonna be super easy. You just redraw one and uh, up until the, the next one. So there's a maximum possibility of three benchmarks that can be uh, randomly selected. One benchmark, then veto, second benchmark, then veto, and obviously the third one that no one will have the choice uh, to do. <laughs> and uh, usually that's quite funny to see when this happened because that already happened in the 2016 season. And if you guys want to know how that was, you can always watch the replay of last year on Overclocking TV YouTube channel. You will be welcome to uh, leave comments underneath. If you have any questions, we will uh, always try to uh, answer back to them. Thank you guys for tuning in here on Twitch.tv, Overclocking TV channel. Uh, I'm Truthman, I will be hosting with you this match. Uh, the Overclockers are uh, still on the, on, the, on the preparation mind right now. So uh, I will tune in with uh, Bidzoid. Bidzoid, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Awesome. So um, we had a few matches or, uh, already today that these matches were... Um, quite interesting in a way ah! they were quite interesting in a way and they they were uh, surprising as well I mean I'd never expect to have Dogna uh, being in the one of the semi-final uh, were you expecting him actually you, did you know him before I didn't event? even know he existed until today so obviously I was surprised by it by you know such an such a newcomer showing up and actually having a pretty uh pretty you know strong showing uh there was some obvious very obvious uh you know visible lack of experience with uh certain things as far as the benchmarks go that we saw today especially with gpu pi it was uh, that gap was horrendous which was the last match we just saw and but other than that like he actually did pretty well frequency wise he wasn't that much for uh, wasn't super behind everybody else. Um, you know, he, he was doing great, actually, considering that he's so new to the, you know, extreme over, well, just overclocking scene in general, because he's only uh, joined Hardware Bot a year ago. So, so actually, it was, yeah. he joined like a year ago, pretty much at the exact same time as now, right? Yeah, exactly. At, at this point, for me, it's exactly a year ago, because he joined on the 7th of January, and it is now just past midnight in, in the UK. So at this point, from my point of view, he's been on Hardware Bot for a year. So and already at this level, this is impressive. I mean, from joining to reaching out uh, Liquid Nitrogen and being able to be that good, actually, to qualify for the Overclocking World Championship. This is the World Championship. Come on. It's, it's not like a regular garage uh, competition like used to happen in the past 10 years and nowadays like this is the official world championships like wow i mean that's quite impressive from uh, from this outsider and he's super super humble as well i mean it's from japan and he's always like he was stressed yesterday let's face it he was stressed out it was the first time he could happen he could uh show up to this kind of event and it was the first time as well for him to do this one versus one format he never experienced that one versus one format before I mean, the one versus one format is new for even a lot of experienced guys, and it, it's brutal compared to, uh, you know, what what other events have, where you have several hours, and 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 it's like it's more like a lot of other events are more similar to like private bench sessions compared to the World Tour, where you have a thirty minute time limit, 
And 30 minutes, it might sound like a lot of time. But it's not really a lot of time. Like, you don't really have time to do tweaks. You don't really have time to uh, troubleshoot at all. Basically, if your system st stops working midway through, you're kind of screwed because you have 15 minutes to fix it. And, and then if you manage to fi fix it in 15 minutes, you still haven't managed to put out another score in those 15 minutes. So you are very, very time constrained on the Hardware bo World Tour uh, events, which, which, you know, basically means that... Uh, just because you, you're really good at, you know, bench sessions where you spend six or seven hours with the system doesn't mean you can actually do well in a bench session where it's uh, where it's 30 minutes. Um, however, um, you know, for example, Lucky Noob, who's going to be uh, in the grand final here right now, he's been he's done a lot of these 1v1 events and he's gotten this down to a, you know, he's like a machine at this point where he is extremely fast dialing settings, troubleshooting his system. Just overall, he, he, he time manages incredibly well for the 1v1 format, which a lot, with a lot of other guys, you, you don't see that right now. Because again, the format is just so new and so different from anything else at any other event. Talking about the rules and everything, this is a, a little bit too late, but the judge was going on each of the systems. So uh, Lee Goft was going on each of the system, clearing out all the possible profiles. So overclocking profiles. When you go into the BIOS, you can save those profiles and they were clearing them up. So you cannot come with like everything already prepared, just points in, in boot because you you have to bench during the 30 minutes. You cannot just prepare everything you, you, you want just before. And once that is done, they are all ready to start the game. So we just uh, need to wait to have the uh, benchmark draw. And uh, that will be uh, that will be starting the final of the Overclocking World Championship here in Las Vegas. That's the first event of the 2017 season. And everything that is happening is live right now on Twitch.tv Overclocking TV. Thank you guys for tuning in. This is Extreme Overclocking. This is the Overclocking World Championship, the biggest competition ever organized in the Overclocking world. I uh, can't wait to be at the end of this year already. There's going to be 10 events on nine different countries. That's going to be very interesting to see who is the best overclocker in the world by the end of the year. But for today, let's focus on the grand final of the OCWC Las Vegas 2017. The benchmark draw will start, will start very soon. The overclockers are just need to, to wait. There's the rules that they need to have uh, the CPU in positive temperature whatsoever. So they cannot go negative before the beginning of the game. Yeah, so they're ju just setting up their systems, making sure that everything works so that, you know, it, it's, a, it's at least a fair start. <laughs> Because what happens once? Comp because if they start running into issues once once the competition's actually off, then and here comes the draw. So and we can't hear Ligoft. CPU Pi for CPU 500M, Cinebench R15, Super Pi 16M. And then Super Pi 8M, once limited 5.5, and once flat out. X. Vito. So X265 is vetoed by Alvar. <laughs> Super Pi 8M. Joe. Okay, Super Pi 8M, it will be. I was kind of hoping you would veto that. <laughs> <laughs> All that right. So. We just so need to wait for the countdown, going to be... and Look, that's going to be the brother. first uh, the, this match between Lucky Noob and Stepanzi on Super Pi 8 Ham. Okay, guys, ready? Yep. Five, four, three, two, one, let's go! And, uh, and here we go! And they are already starting with the pull downs. <laughs> So they have to put and down the, the, their, 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 their CPU to the temperature they want. So they can use that with the extreme temperature right now. They can go below 196C. Uh, that's going to be the maximum the liquid nitrogen will allow them today. But that we all know that the CPU will be running although at that temperature. 
Step on Z seems to be pulling down faster than Alva as he he's been doing more pours, or he might have the slower LN two paw here. Though I kind of suspect they might both be using the Kingpin F one Dark or F one EE one of one of that generation of pot, which is a really big, heavy copper pot. So they both should have similar pull down times. As for the benchmark, Super Pi 8 million is actually really fast um, by, well, compared to the other Super Pi we have here, which is 16 million. And this will be interesting because, well, uh, for one thing, it is, you know, mass, it's single threaded, very memory sensitive, uh, cache sensitive, very tweakable benchmark. Unfortunately, they're on Windows 10 and they can't really do a whole lot of uh, uh, software level tweaking. But as far as memory tuning and uh, CPU clocks go, Super Pi is one of the best benchmarks to you know see the absolute uh, peak performance for those two things. So th this will be a pretty difficult matchup. Um, and unlike in previous matches, we do have some information on the memory both of them are using. They're both using team group kits rated for 2133, 15, 15, 15. So, uh, so that's a quite basic kit, but uh, that, that would be interesting because it's yeah, not that... because you used always the best hardware that you can do the best core. I mean, here what is important is to have one of the overclockers I mean, that yeah, is better the end than of the, the day, other one. They, they, yeah, at the end of the day, they're both using the same kit. So, one of, if one of them gets that kit higher, one of them is obviously the better overclocker here. But it does mean that pretty much any frequency, and we have seen this kit running over three gigahertz here today. So any frequency over three gigahertz really on this kit is quite the achievement as that is almost, that that's almost a gigahertz over stock clock for the kit. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see what kind of clocks and settings they end up with. Now, the important thing to note with, with Super Pi 8 million, uh, as the Super Pi uh, has several size settings, so 8 million calculates 8 million digits of pi, 16 million calculates 16 million digits of pi. There's also 32 million, 4 million, 2 million, 1 million. It basically goes in we'll go increments of powers of two. Um, well, I think it does, <laughs> to some extent at least. And the thing is, as the uh, size of your uh, Super Pi calculation decreases, the less memory has an impact for it, and the more it is about all-out CPU. Well, it's not necessarily more about all-out CPU clock speed, but it does tend to be easier to maintain higher CPU clocks, as the CPU does only have to be stable for a shorter time period, as you are doing less calculations to get your actual uh, score. So for 8 million, the time to run is going to be in the... Uh, I'm, I'm actually really bad at estimating this, but I'm going to say in the sort of 1 minute 20 second area, um, with the setups they have here. And so it, it's going to be about half the time to calculate as 16 million. So, so here we go. We have uh, Lucky Noob that is already in the BIOS, uh, in the in the in the OS uh, operating uh, step system. Hunt. Yes. Ste Stepons is actually struggling to get it working. Uh, that's going to be <laughs> fun to see what he can pull out. So, uh, so it's, it's Stepan most Stepan likely might like be meeting. Yeah. He might be meeting that same issue he had in the in the first match we saw with Stepons today, where he actually got a really great score right out of the gate, right? He did two runs, and his second run was absolutely monstrous, and he won the match with his second score. But for the rest of the match, he was having massive issues with his system. Okay. So hopefully he doesn't have those issues again here, because Lucky Noob, like, you know... If Lucky if Lucky Doob is uh, if not not having any issues with his system, he is capable of churning out scores very 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 quickly, and they tend to be pretty damn good. So, so that's exactly uh, what is happening right now. He's already inside the OS. He's already benching Super Pi 8M. He's at 5.5 gigahertz at 1.65 volts. His encore is only at 5 gigahertz. He didn't increase that one too much yet. Uh, but so far, so good. The uh, Intel Core i7 7700K, the Kaby Lake CPU used on the uh, Gigabyte Z270 X Gaming SoC motherboard is uh, supporting that. Uh, the Super Pi 8M going on right now will be finishing quite soon let's hope it's not gonna crash and that's gonna be the first core for this final of the overclocking world championship yeah the interesting thing to note with uh lucky noobs benching is like he's gotten 
extremely experienced in these 1v1 events, and pretty much the only thing limiting the number of scores he can put out is the time that the benchmark takes to run. And we have his first score right now. 1 minute so, and 14 seconds. So I was actually right about my estimate of a little high. but So yeah, so, you know, in theory, you could probably get around uh, 20 runs of this benchmark in before you know optimally in that 30 minute time period but obviously you have to tweak your settings and and he's running again already oh and we've got the blue screen from Stepons is not even having the first score up on the scoreboard it's more than six minutes that this game have already started and he's not managing to get into the US that's gonna give him a hard time especially to reach uh, Lucky Noob that is having a strong one minute and 14 seconds score already on the scoreboard and a blue and a screen again screen. Oh, oh, that that is not good for Stepanzi because Lucky Noob is, you know, he's already it's, he seems to be already halfway through his second run of of eight million. So, you know, if if this keeps going on, Lucky Noob could very much be doing a bad, you know, doing a run almost every two minutes until the system crashes. After which he's probably going to get up. After that, he's going to slow down because basically once the system starts crashing. Uh, that usually means you're sort of hitting the ceiling, and at that point, getting any more frequency out of the system becomes very, very difficult. But and here we go. Loop One last twenty-three. Two. And new score, new lucky score. new. At... One minute, ten seconds, two four two. One minute, ten seconds, two four two. So he just chopped off four seconds off of his old score, and yeah, he's he's just going up and up and up with <laughs> 1.8 volts. Two. And 6.2 gigahertz on the CPU clock. So th this is this is in the upper ranges of what we've seen today. Uh, I think the highest we've seen is 6.5 gigahertz, which really isn't that high for KB Lake overall. But in this 30-minute you know format, it it is very difficult to actually go above say 6.5 gigahertz because you are extremely time limited. You do not have a lot of time to fine tune your settings. Uh, also, the hardware they are using is extremely minutes. new as they are both on the Z270X-Gaming uh, SoC motherboard from Gigabyte. And this motherboard pretty much doesn't exist anywhere outside of a, this event and Gigabyte R&D labs. So Gigabyte will hope will probably be using a lot of the uh, feedback from the overclockers at the event here today to improve on the you know performance of this motherboard in the future. So... There's valuable information being gained for the for the R&D teams at Gigabyte, but for us, what's important here is the scores and the clocks. And scores, speaking of scores, scores Lucky scores Noob is and clocks. Lucky, <laughs> Lucky Noob is about to just get another one. <laughs> yeah. Just have to wait now. I just have to wait the loop <laughs> to finish. Like, yeah, I'm just casually waiting <laughs> for a new scores to pop up. And interesting to know, we're not score, even at the 10-minute minute mark. Seconds, zero, five, four. Yeah, so he chopped off another three seconds. So he is chopping off less and less uh, as he's going up. Well, he's actually chopping more and more. <laughs> no, because last time he went from 14 to 10, and now he went from 10 to 3, uh, 10 to 7. Because he I... was 1 minute 14, 1 minute 7. Well, no, 1 minute 10, 1 minute 7 now. So he he's, in terms of seconds, it's smaller. And he seems to have crashed at 6.3 gigahertz. Yeah, it, it did crash. And he is very quickly completely unpowering the system. Step only is still having issues getting the system to even fire up. Did you see how fast that was? He yeah, he just the... completely drained the, the motherboard in, in a matter of seconds. As, as I said, he's had way too much practice at this at this point it's just not fair having people go up against him um like there you go already booting up and uh, restarting the system so that is first crash from this uh, from this competition he managed to do 10 minutes pretty much of uh of setting up the the, the first few settings in the bios up to the um to the other ones and we finally have uh step in the minutes. bios Actually, in the OS. In the, in the OS, sorry. <laughs> and he's going for 6.1 gigahertz at 1.75 volts on the V-Core. So no 5. place 5.7 gigahertz on core. So, and he's tweaking Super Pi and Killing Explorer. 
I don't think we saw Alva do that, uh, Lucky Noob do that whatsoever. He just ran it with Explorer still running in the background. So we, it'll be interesting to see if this has, uh, you know, a large impact. As Staponzi will be only running about a giga, uh, around 100 megahertz behind uh, Lucky Noob's current best time, which was done at 6.2 gigahertz. So if Staponzi can do a pass at 6.1 gigahertz, you know, he's not too far behind on frequency. We will see if the tweaks get him particularly close. And he's benching at 6.1 gigahertz and he's also using 5.7 gigahertz on core and it's yeah. all at 1.75 volt for the core voltage. Um, we have seen Lucky Noob going a little bit higher in the voltage. Uh, maybe it's because he wanted to have something safe. He was also and, uh, at higher. And higher, higher frequency uh, the, as well. Yeah, higher frequency, like 200 megahertz higher. We did for, just see Staponzi spam the Super Pi. He, he flashed the window a few times. That was him running the 16K version of Super Pi just to do a quick stability check. Generally, if a few runs of that pass, it means the system is stable enough to run uh, the, well, not necessarily stable enough, but stable enough that you can actually try to run the full size of Super Pi. Um, because again, if you if you start off Super Pi, uh, you know, um, uh, 8 million and you crash like halfway through, that's time you wasted waiting for, you know, 30, 45 seconds for the benchmark to just crash on you. So that's really not worth doing, which is why you see uh, Staponzi doing those stability checks. Since they do only take a few seconds and they can save you quite a lot of time as Especially in these 30 minute matches, I mean, uh, any seconds yep. they can shave off, like even in boot time for the motherboard, even in, in the way you want to have their settings. We were, we're talking about the profiles as well. This is yeah, one way yeah. of doing it. Yep. The and finally! Six seconds, seven, two, six. And he's getting in the lead! First core taking the lead. This is quite impressive. Uh, about 13 minutes into that game. Well, congratulations, Stefan. He's man. smiling. He's, look at this. It, nice. would be, it would be very interesting to see his memory settings, but because 100 megahertz is not a small gap in CPU performance. So it would be interesting to see also his memory settings because I, I'm not 100% sold that just disabling explorer.exe saved him that much time on the benchmark. And of course, Lucky Noob is doing his own run now. And while uh, Stephonzi is rebooting the system. Loop 23. Can we... Alva, one minute, uh, six seconds, 100. And taking back this the lead. This is very close. Oh, that's good. Taking that's back good. the that's lead, the, yeah. but by a very small amount, 600 milliseconds. Uh, I think for him at this point, it might be worth it to disable, you know, Explorer and do all the tweaks just to get that a little bit more extra performance because he's not leading by that much here. It, it is a matter of milliseconds and you can get those extra milliseconds easily by just doing those extra tweaks. And he just crashed. And Let's these are the highest... can get that system to recover. Yeah. This is almost the highest frequency we have been seeing today, especially in the matches. He's at six, he was at 6.4 gigahertz just before crashing at 6 gigahertz on core. This is insane. I mean, these Kabidex CPU are performing like hell, especially for overclockers. Um, they're, they're, we used to say like overclockers dream in a way, but this is very interesting to see what the guys are managing to push out of the chips uh, up like this. Step Hansi now in the uh, application to adjust the frequencies. So, so that is the goes. Gigabyte Tweak Launcher. Um, you can actually, I'm not sure where exactly you can get that, but it works for a lot of Gigabyte motherboards. It's not exclusive to their, uh, their SOC line. Um, it's not necessarily supported by all motherboards, but it works with most of them in my experience. And it is a very, very nice... Uh, lightweight overclocking application. As you can see, there's not much flashy GUI to go around. It is very much just voltages, frequencies, and everything you need to get your overclocks working, but nothing extra. So, you know, very, very nice tool from Gigabyte to use for overclocking. Um, so, uh, Lucky, and is, uh, stressing Lucky out Noob again bit. managed to do a full... Yeah, he's stressing out, but he managed to do a full system reset again in just record time. <laughs> <laughs> Halfway last 15 minutes. Stepons is on its way to do his second score. Let's hope that this one will be finishing. Finish it! <laughs> oh, 
we might finally get a chance to see. So he's running 15 and he's tightening the TWR. Whereas Stepanzi is uh, running his Super Pi 8 million right now. This is definitely two way of doing things. I mean, Stepans went super hardcore at 6.1 gigahertz straight for his first core. That was quite risky to do, but he's still managing to uh, to, to shave off a nice score at the first submission, and that that puts some pressure on Lucky Noob as well. But, I mean, the uh, thing Lucky is for Stepanzi. The thing is for Stepanzi, if he ran a slower score, right, he wouldn't really be gaining a whole lot, unless Lucky Noob just killed his CPU. Um, yeah, it's something that actually, is uh, not going to happen, uh, in my opinion, in here. I mean, people have been very Yeah, careful. it's not going to happen. People, Yeah, we haven't really seen any super extreme voltages. One minute, five, uh, six, seven, nine, step on. So it's improving his uh, previous scores, but it's not uh, improving enough to go beat Lucky Noob uh, at his own game. No, he did. So, he just did beat him by about Oh, quarter yeah, sorry. A quarter mission. Yeah. I don't know how to tweet <laughs> my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> So 6.2 gigahertz, uh, that's uh, yeah, so quite... so he's pushing uh, some pretty good efficiency there. So it would be interesting to see what kind of differences they have in their memory settings, but uh, unfortunately we probably won't get any details on that just because they won't be checking that while in the OS. <laughs> so it's like changing 5.57's multiplier to 57 multiplier, very useful. <laughs> um, Maybe there might just be a glitch with the app for him or something, or he just forgot that it's already at 57. I think it's it's just part of the process that he wants to have for benching. It's like, he always does it, so he doesn't... Yeah, change all like, of them. Like, like yeah. a, a mining queue, so you know exactly that, that you did it. It's like checking your door, change this, change that, uh, your change door this, when you lock your yeah. door behind yourself. Yeah. And yeah, off we go. Once again, SuperPy 8M, that's going to take about 1 minute and 5 seconds to run. If he's finishing this one uh, with the settings he did uh, change, he should shave off maybe 500 milliseconds at least. Uh, let's see if that uh, that could be good enough to improve again his own score and uh, try to distance himself from Lucky Noob that is still trying to put the system into the BIOS. The interesting thing to note about Stepanzi's system is that he is actually running all four cores on his CPU. He hasn't disabled his cores. He does have hyperthreading disabled because hyperthreading uh, does eat into the memory controller's performance just because of how hyperthreading works. So SuperPy does benefit from disabling hyperthreading, but the core disabling is mostly done so that you can run higher frequencies with a lower heat load. But Stepanzi is opting to run all four cores, which is an interesting choice on his part. <laughs> can see uh, as put 21 there's two more loops and we're gonna have the score and nope. it actually got worse did it not yes he did lose about 400 milliseconds so actually this new score he put out was actually slow is slower than lucky noob's current best so what he will do he will just restart the system uh, maybe clean up some of the uh, of the information that were in cache or staying inside the motherboard yeah. and it will maybe try again the same settings because it knows it was stable but not performing uh, good enough to shave off a few milliseconds out of his previous score. And he's already he's already back. He's already back inside. So 1.85 volts. Uh, that was the same setting as he was doing before. I guess he's gonna do 63. He was at 6.2 just before, no? No, I, I do believe he was at six, 63 at this point. Or mate, because he did get that 1.5679 score on uh, on a higher setting. So Lucky Noob is still tweaking all of his memories, memory uh, adv advanced settings for the memory and all the sub timings. Um, but he seems to be having issues just booting the system at this point. So you can see it's uh, some very obscure memory timings. Uh, all these well, the, these top ones, I actually know these, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't even remember their names. I just, I, it's like I, I know they exist, and those are not that complicated to play with. Generally, lower is better for those, and th they'll act like the regular primary timings, where if you put them too low, they crash. It's ten as minutes, you scroll further minutes. down and down that table, you eventually get to the really complicated settings where it's like you basically need a guide uh, from somebody. <laughs> who's been told what all of those settings even mean. So, yeah. 
That's that's a very interesting uh, match from now. Lucky Noob was submitting the first core, and Stepan's catch up on him super super like super hard in a way. I mean, he submitted two scores, and these two scores were better and better. And Lucky Noob still like behind. He's lacking behind like 500 milliseconds now to have the the same to match up the score from Stepan's. Stepan's is already on its way to a third score. Maybe this one will be improving his previous one. And Lucky Noob is still struggling to make the system running at these high frequencies. He and scores, that is a, 1 minute 4 seconds, 3, 8, 2, that is 1 a minute big 4, jump. 3, 8, 2. That is a very big jump from Stepanzi in his score, that's more than a second. Uh, that which looks is like a one of the score he was he's... expecting just before as well. Yep. But then again, there was uh, yeah, he had some issue with the system before. A lot of the benchmarks, if you keep running them over and over and over again, they start to... They either... Some of them will speed up, some of them will slow down. So... You know, it's it's always worth it to restart the system if it looks like it's not performing properly, and it's also always worth it to run the benchmark twice. Um. So Lucky Noob is now starting his run. Will be interesting to see if he manages to catch up to Stepanzi. All righty. We do have the two goalkeepers benching now. Yeah, Stepanzi is starting okay. his run. It's interesting that Lucky Noob has still not opted to do any of the tweaking. Or at least I haven't seen him do affinity or uh, priority on his system. And he certainly hasn't killed Explorer yet. So um, he might be losing himself seconds? some milliseconds by just not doing those software tweaks. Hey, might I? Uh. New score, Lucky Noob, 1 minute 5, 1, 3, 1. 1 minute 5, 1, 3, 1. That would have been okay if that was the previous score of Stepons that was still on the scoreboard. But uh, yeah, as Stepons keep point... improving, it's like very... Uh, no, it's very hard for him to catch up now. I, I think at this point, uh, Lucky Noob really should do the software tweaks, even the, the very basic ones, and maybe start trying to tweak by like a megahertz on the BCLK. Um, because again... Or even less than a megahertz. Really try to get squeeze out, say, 50 megahertz more out of the Joseph CPU clock. One minute, three, six, four, seven. One minute, three, six, four, seven. Yeah, because he really, really needs to catch up at this point. And frequency in Super Pi is the easiest way forward. So, because it is a very sensitive benchmark, and 50 megahertz more on the core clock can get you a lot lower, a uh, lot lower time. There's less than seven minutes left in this final of the overclocking World Championship Las Vegas 2017. That's gonna be tough battle, tough battle right here between Stepans and Lucky Noob. So the two overclockers doing things super fast in the systems. They want to make sure and that uh, the system would be seems uh, to have crashed. Lucky Noob seems to have crashed while Stepanzi is applying all his tweaks. Should be running his benchmark, running uh, Super Pi very, very soon. He's at 6.5 gigahertz. Look at this. Stepons is putting 6.5 gigahertz. 1.85 volts. Yep. This is quite so high. I mean, Lakino was trying voltages. to do 6.4 at 1.9 volts just before. True. And off we go. We may yet get to see a blue screen. <laughs> I mean, we've already seen two this match. We may get yet to see yet another one. Just wait for it. <laughs> so it's quite interesting to see as well that for each loop, you will know if it's faster or slower than your previous run. So for example, you wait for Five loop minutes. 10. So you shave, you know, like it's like 28 seconds, 034. I know that your previous run was maybe like 29 
dot one to something. So you know it's actually going faster from this one. We do have the two guys. Oh, Lucky Noob is running into some stability issues. Yep, so Even now the benchmark's some... even yeah. complaining to him. It's <laughs> not a good thing. That's gonna be tough. Let's focus back on the score of Stepan's. He will be most probably improving his score Stepans, indeed. One minute, two seconds, nine, two, eight. One minute, two seconds, nine, two, eight. Good, go. Yeah, this, this is gonna be very, very difficult for Lucky four Noob minutes. as he does only have four minutes. Um, you know, at the, at this point, pretty much if his second run or his third run will end up going into overtime for Lucky Noob, and Stepanzi is obviously also going to get a get a run into overtime as well, unless one of their systems crashes, which will take too long to recover, and they'll instead only get two runs. So, Lucky Noob pretty much only has three tries left, or two, depending on how unstable his system ends up being. And same goes for Stepanzi, so gonna be tough. And as those seconds count down, I think even three runs might not be possible for either of them. As the benchmark does take more than a minute to run. I think best case they can run twice. And the last run. Yeah, at this be point it's definitely twice. Right before the end of the of the match. So uh, what we have here is uh, Lucky Noob at 6.427 gigahertz and it will smash the 16k and launch the one and oh blue, blue screen. Screen. so this is like three minutes before the end so lucky noob have to restart the system dial in the settings yep. launch the benchmark in the next three minutes for it to to be validated uh, during yep. that time step Hans is already benching he's already continuing benching uh, so let's see if he's gonna be improving his uh, his time can wait for loop 10 that was at 18 seconds something just earlier uh, 28 seconds and something just earlier. So this would be close. And that's actually faster. Seven. This run is faster than the previous one. So if this run continue and finish by being fully stable, it should get a better score. Should get a better score. It's like... Yeah, you can see he's happy. He's happy. He knows that he, this is going well for him for now. Two minutes. Loop 21. Just waiting for loop 23 and the final score. He, he keeps he almost scored. taking one another minute, second seconds, off. Zero six nine. One two seconds. Zero six nine. Improving his score again, um, catching up on uh, Halva. So let's have to see Halva. There's 140 seconds left. Maybe Halva have the time to set up all this system and to run one last okay. benchmark. One minute 30. He's going for one last run at this point, and he's running one million for some reason. Oh, and it's and it not crashed stable. again. And yeah, so he's stable. having stability issues. So he's probably not going to get another run in, as he doesn't seem to be able to get the system to run one million much less 8 million. Looking back at the screen to check the time, filling up the system. Joe is, is going back in. I mean, Joe is never stopping. I mean, he, he wants to win. He want, he's at home here. One he's minute. the only American represented in the uh, semi-final and grand and final here. So, of course, he wants to show off what he can do. And he's at 1.9 volt on the CPU. He's going for 6.8. Really? Are that you going for 6.8 gigahertz? High. That <laughs> is very, very high by even, well, it's not super high, but it is a very high frequency in, in like Intel CPU terms. For KB, like it is not necessarily the highest, but let me quickly just pull up the statistic. This is extremely insane. I mean, we are in a competition that lasts 30 minutes and that guy managed to put out a 6.8 gigahertz. Would it be stable? I don't know. That's what we have to find out now. Yeah. Um... Let's cheer for loop one. Loop one Blue is not going to happen. Blue screen! Blue screen! Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. And okay. We'll do America! Oh. Woo! <laughs>
Congratulations to Stepans. I mean, Lucky New was like, I don't have the time to boot the system and run the uh, the score again. So it just said yes. Uh, you can pull me up. Congratulations, dude. You you did it. So this is it. Stepanzi is the champion of the OCWC Las Vegas yeah, 2017. Uh, probably probably representing the uh, USA right here. Um, this was quite quite a match. I mean, wow. I mean. Lucky Noob was putting out some decent score using step by step, but he did struggle for a good 10 minutes in trying to find out why the system was not stable with the setting he applied. That's something that can happen, of course, at this level of competition. I mean, these guys are using liquid nitrogen, they're using the latest board ever. That's uh, some of the board on the market for just two, uh, two days, so less than 48 hours. I'm not even sure that. Any of you guys you could have uh, already one of these boards back uh, back at home. Can't. Same for the CPU. As of right now, this motherboard is not on the Gigabyte website. Yeah, it's not even on the so, Gigabyte. Of, it's not even on the official it Gigabyte website. It pretty much doesn't exist. <laughs> 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 except except everybody watching this event, of course, you're getting a exclusive preview of Gigabyte's latest and greatest overclocking motherboard. Uh, the Z270X Dash Gaming SoC. Um, does it have any RGB on it? <laughs> of course there is. Of <laughs> just course. because, just because this year is pretty. It much is a commodity now. I mean, that's uh, that's that's. I mean, okay, everyone RGB wants LCDs it. are cheap. RGB controllers are cheap. Give the people a choice. Give them disco balls, or disco <laughs> boards. <laughs> So here we have Lucky Noob and Stepan Z representing the last the last match of today of the OCWC Las Vegas 2017. You can see there's a good friendship going on between the two. I mean, they do share a lot in common. The love for hardware, the love for uh, having always the smile on the face. Well, except when Stepan Z is too tired. <laughs> But it's good. I mean, you can see them zorching uh, the system. So today, all of these overclockers use the Intel Core i7-7700K CPU. This is a Kaby Lake CPU from Intel, the latest one that was just released a few days ago. And they were using the Gigabyte uh, Z270X Gaming SoC motherboard. Uh, of course, this is one of the latest motherboard from uh, Gigabyte. And uh, you can see that Stephanie is using an open bench table as well um, to, to put his system on. And they were all, and most importantly, using the Seasonic Snow Silent PSU. This PSU have been, um, will be used for all the stop in the world tour this year. And I have to admit that it does look good. And it is actually a uh, quite interesting PSUs. I mean, the Seasonic is uh, partnering again with uh, HW, but this year for the World Tour. So that's uh, for sure. We're gonna see way more of this in the next in the next few days. Wow, wow, wow! What a game! What a game! This was impressive between Lucky Noob and Stepanzi. This was the final of the overclocking. World Championship here in Las Vegas 2017. We are here at CES, so we will have the uh, award ceremony right on stage and everything here. But before going into that, we're going to take a short break and come back with the analysis from Tullius. Thank you guys for watching and see you right after the break. <laughs> 